This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Wrong theme, wrong theme. Oh well. I screwed up, okay? All right? I screwed up. I pl- I actually got the wrong theme going. I got which one did I get going? I got the obituaries, I think, going. Anyway, hi everybody, how are you? So I screwed up the beginning of the show. Sue me. Alright? What, what did I play? I played this, right? Yeah. People who died. These are people who died, died. These are people who died, died. These are people who died, died. Those are people who died, died. They were my friends and they died. Yeah, that's Jim Carroll. He's dead, oddly enough. And uh, a nice guy, by the way. I, I had him on my show. I had him on my show when I was at WMCA in New York. He reminded me that I had had him on the air. He was one of... I did a show with a bunch of young poets, young New York poets, and he was one of the young New New York poets. I'm trying to remember who was the poet who brought him by, very famous New York poet. And uh, that's when I first met Jim Carroll, but I didn't know that until finally in San Francisco, I had Jim Carroll on the program, and he said to me, you know, I've been on your show before. I was a young poet. Uh, I did a show on young poets, and I was on it, and uh, John Giorno was the uh, poet to, that brought him by. How do I rem- You know, I, it amazes me that in my old age, I can't remember simple names, but I can, br- I can just foster up John Giorno out of nowhere. Does that make sense? Anyway, so we don't have any guests tonight. Uh, we will have some guests coming up soon, though. I have been in contact. Well, I'm, next week I'm doing uh, Penn Jillette. We'll have uh, Penn Jillette here. And uh, not not here, but he'll be there, and I'll be here, and we'll be talking, uh, and that's next week. Also, I've been talking with Rob Schneider about doing a little thing with us. I know I know some of you have an attitude about Rob Schneider. Oh, big deal, Rob Schneider. But uh, Bubs, uh, next week in the interview that I did yesterday, next week we'll talk about. Uh, talk, I think it's next week. Maybe it was this week. Uh, we'll talk about Rob. And how when he goes into a store with Rob, everybody comes up to him. They recognize him. He's a cel- he said, I've never seen a guy have that much celebrity when I've been next to them. I mean, he's, I've been with Robin Williams, and he didn't get that kind of celebrity. And, and, but I like Rob. Rob's a really nice guy, and he, I am very protective of Rob because every time Family Guy decides to do a Rob Schneider joke, I immediately kind of, you know, get mad at that. I get upset. And so uh, I talked to Rob, or I'm talking to him by email, and we're trying to set up a date. Uh, But um, I'll write him again tomorrow and see what what we can do. I also have a lot of other people I'm I'm looking at getting on here. So, you know, uh, but tonight I don't have anybody. Uh, And uh, uh, I'm sorry, Uh, I don't have anybody. What the hell, you know? Next week I got Will Durst and I got Penn Jillette and I got Bubs, you know. So when it's feast or famine. So anyway, I've been, um, you know, I was uh, sick on uh, on Monday, so sick that I was supposed to do my weekly interview, my twice, once every other weekly interviews with uh, with Bubs, and I had to call him and say I just can't. I'm just too sick. And I went to uh, City MD. Uh, to go see what was wrong with me. Now, City MD is one of these walk-in, professional, for-profit, little walk-in hospital things. And they don't do much there. I mean, in other words, like a girlfriend broke her arm, and they just simply put a, a makeshift splint on it and said, get to your doctor on Monday. But what these little clinics are great for, and I'm sure you've got them in your town, and you probably don't take advantage of them because you feel, oh well, you know, uh, I I don't I I don't think it, it can't be that good, right? Uh, 
But what, what I use them for, and it's an important uh, reason, uh, excuse me, I'm doing work here as well. Uh, it, it's an important reason is that, let's say like I was really sick the other day, all right? So I have a internist, uh, Dr. Kenish, very good doctor, watches out for me, does my tests every year, you know, um, He's a uh, he's a cardiologist among other things, and he is also a you know does a normal regular practice. So he then is good at watching my heart and making sure it's in good shape. And he's a very very big ticker guy. But if I call him and I say, uh, "Hey, I'm sick and I need uh, I need some help here," it's not going to be come on down today. I'm sure. Uh, can you be here tomorrow at noon? We have an opening. You know, he probably has certain little slots for people who are really sick. But, you know, it, it would be like the next day. And by then, I was, it would either be worse or I'd be getting better. And I wanted relief from what was wrong with me. So I go to this place called City MD. And the first time I did this, I had some kind of a problem. And they said, uh, you have a, what looks to be, they looked at me inside, and they said, you have a sinus infection. And they gave me a prescription for some pills, and I went to the pharmacy, and I filled out the prescription, got the prescription filled, and uh, took it. And within a few days, I was feeling 100%. Hey, that's amazing. City MD did this for me. So a couple of months ago, I was really sick. Again, I mean really deathly sick, and I went there. And I saw the doctor, and she looked at me, and I don't think it was a sinus infection this time. This time they said it was some uh, something else, but she gave me prescription for stuff and an inhaler. Oh, I know what it was. They said, you, you have bronchitis. That's why I've got this, this inhaler, which I, these don't do much of anything for me. They don't even get you high, you know. It sounds like you're smoking pot, but it doesn't get you high. But I went and I went to the uh, I went to them and they said it was bronchitis and then she gave me a prescription and I went down to the pharmacy I uh, and I'm like I'm a maybe a oh a 20 minute walk from the pharmacy if I walk slowly and when I get there it's never ready so you know so I just go home and wait until I see on my computer it says uh, oh hey your your CVS prescription is ready uh, but I took the medicine and within a day. I was feeling 100%, okay? I was feeling great. And uh, so this week, I was just, I, I, and I, I, you know, it's one of those kind of things where you can't, you know something's wrong with you, but you can't figure out what it is, and you can't really describe it to somebody else. All you can do is give them the little, you know, uh, uh, what can I call it, uh, a, a little the, the list of, of things you've got feeling wrong with you. Like I felt kind of pain up here. And uh, I was belching a lot for some reason. I don't know. And uh, just I felt, I said, I just feel terrible. And I, I have no energy. And uh, she looked at me and she said, it could be sinusitis. She says, but whatever it is, she says, I'm going to give you some more pills. They usually give you, what they give you is steroids. Uh, they seem to, if you've got something wrong with you and there's an inflammation or whatever, steroids will help take care of it. It's like massive ibuprofen, you know. So uh, I started taking these things, and that night I was feeling better. Yesterday I was feeling a little bit better. Today I'm feeling much better. And uh, tomorrow I'm sure I'm going to be feeling uh, uh, damn good. So I, you know, and it's this... City MD, this little shitty anonymous doctor you go to. I mean, it's a nice place. They're nice places, and they've got them all over town. And uh, I would suggest that over going to your uh, uh, to your regular doctor. And here's the reason why: because you say, "Well, but my regular doctor, I trust." You know, well, these doctors, if they don't think they can fix what's wrong with you, or that you've got something that's more complicated, they're going to tell you to go see your doctor. So, and also they take Medicare and that's it. You know, I mean, for me, uh, they take also any other, you know, insurance, but I've never gotten a follow-up bill or a copay or anything from them. And I think they did, uh, they've done in three, uh, three out of three cases, they have solved my problem. So 
they're the pl- I think they're the place to go. If you know, I mean, if you look, if you're if you're if you're puking up blood, I think you should go to your doctor. Uh, if there's uh, blood in your stool or stool in your blood, I would go see your doctor. But if you've got like this thing, this nagging cough that just won't go away and it's just continuing and whatever, go to CMD. You know, it's fast. Um, one time I was a little disappointed because they made me sit in this room for about 45 minutes before they saw me. Um, so anyway, uh, but outside of that, I have no complaint with them. I have no complaint. Um, and uh, if you have them in your city, it's it's well worth it. So then I had another thing happen. It was the same thing that happened the last time. The sec- last time I got sick and went to City MD, I also had a tooth problem. I've got this. Uh, let me explain it to you. Hey, you love listening to this show. All you hear is my entire medical problems. But this is kind of interesting. I have a loose tooth back here. It's mobile, as it is, as it is described. Uh, and um, it's loose because it, there's sufficient bone loss in there that it's loose. And it's very receded. Um, and occasionally, uh, I have a problem with it. It gets infected. Okay, and uh, the last time I got infected, she said, well, it's infected. And uh, she gave me this, uh, she shot this medicine up into the gum that's an antibiotic that clears it up, you know. Well, I started having problems again a couple of days ago. And I went to see her and she says, well, you only get two more doses of this before we pull the tooth. I said, okay. She said, it doesn't look like an infection this time. It just looks like an inflammation. Now, I don't think that should count as one of the times that, you know, but I have one more. So she did the whole thing, and now I'm sitting here waiting to see if it gets better. Uh, Mouthfeel. What happened was, here's what happened. Uh, They said, you haven't had your teeth cleaned in a year. And I said, I haven't had my teeth cleaned in a year because you're not in network, and uh, I need... Uh, an in-network doctor to do certain things, you know. And I just haven't gotten to another one to get teeth cleaning. Which, by the way, you know, teeth cleaning is something that's all on its own. You know, uh, somebody goes in there, they clean your mouth, they clean, scrape your teeth, they do all of that. It's not basic dentistry. It's not drilling. It's not solving problem. It's not pulling a tooth. Uh, and w- they should have places you can go where they just do cleaning. That's what they do. Because I remember once I had a, a, a dentist and I had a, a hygienist and she was terrible. I hated this hygienist. The only thing that made it good for me is she'd slap some gas on my face and then start cleaning my teeth. So I just went, okay, I hate her, but okay. But she always had a nasty attitude. And I, I, I said to my ado- dentist, I said, I don't like her. I, I said, but you, you always make me use her. And uh, he said, yeah. And you ever notice that? You always have to use the hygienist that's in your dentist's office to do the cleaning. But there should be places you can go. Like you can say, I don't want your person. I'm going to go somewhere else and get my teeth cleaned. Right? And then go to someplace else and get your teeth cleaned. But there are no places like that. Um, they, if they had that, maybe some of them would be taking my insurance. But anyway, so I don't. I'm not really insured with this dentist, but I go to her because I've gone to her for years, and I do get something back. Okay, um, and uh, I've got uh, Oxford, some kind of offshoot of Oxford for dental and vision. Okay, and. Uh, I said, well, how much is this going to cost? And she says, well, you got you got the cleaning, yeah, and then you got to have an X-ray at least on that one tooth so we can see that it's okay, you know. And it hasn't changed, by the way. In five years, I have not had bone erosion there, so the tooth is still okay. It's just that because it is so exposed, it it gets uh, inflamed or infected. Like if somebody said, if a, if, a, if a caraway seed gets in there, it could cause a problem so always make sure that you're cleaning that out when you're using your your water pick okay uh and uh, uh, uh then i had, let's see i had to have the x-ray and then the medicine right and then they said to me you know you also got to have x-rays we, we haven't x-rayed your mouth in a long time and i said I, you know, I thought to myself i can't afford the x-rays 
The x-rays were like 95 bucks. Now, if I had a dental plan that was paying for all this shit, go ahead, take pictures, go have a good time. And I figured, eh, I don't, I'm not eating that much sugar lately, and I don't seem to have any, any dental problems physically that way. So uh, I'll pass on it for now, because I'll go to Marjorie as a dentist, and I'll go to her, get her to do the x-rays, you know, and, and let the insurance pay for all of it. Um, anyway, I wound up having to pay, what was it, 360 bucks today? for all my little dental stuff. But I have clean teeth, look at this. She, she used baking soda to blast my teeth clean. So I now have, I now have clean teeth, okay? Uh, and she, but she went up there into this inflammation and she just dug like she was looking for gold. And so now it, you know, you know how sometimes if you're gonna have your teeth clean and they got him really did like, have you ever had root planing? They get in there, teeth hurt like afterwards. But yeah, hopefully it'll get better, then I'll be fine. And then uh, let's see here, do I have any other ailments? My knee feels better today. My meniscus is okay. Yeah, these are all updates for you. Here's the thing that I don't. I hate insurance companies. I hate medical insurance companies. Uh, and we deal with them. Every day we deal with them. Even if you've got Medicare, you're going to deal with a insurance company. And the reason you're going to deal with an insurance company is because um, uh, they supply you or they take care of uh, your um, other 20% that Medicare doesn't pay for. Now, I love Medicare. I mean, you know, all most doctors do to this day take Medicare, and if they don't, Fuck them. Um, but there's still that 20% that you still have to pay. Now, let's say you're an old person and you've just had a heart bypass surgery. Cost $300,000. But 20% isn't paid for. What? Oh, I mean, I owe $30,000 even though I've got Medicare? Yeah, because you take care of the other 20%. So you have to go out and get a thing that's called uh, supplemental. Supplemental used to be a hundred bucks, uh, what, a month, something like that, twelve hundred bucks a year, and uh, it took care of everything above and beyond what Medicare would take care of. Okay. Uh, now, when I was at Sirius, because I was at a company that had more than I think ten people, I think that's the number, um, I used their medical plan as my primary and Medicare as my supplemental. But once I no longer had a job, reversed itself, right? Marjorie has insurance at work, so I'm on her insurance plan, and our primary is Medicare, and our secondary is what she has at work. Uh, unfortunately, it sucks. You know, insurance companies want to see how much money they can extract from you and not have to uh, extract from you and not have to uh, uh, pay you back. And, and so here's what happens. I don't get, go to doctors that often, okay? I mean, uh, but I go to them enough that, gee, I'd like to see that that Oxford Insurance would pay something, but it has a hundred, a thousand dollar deductible. That's in network, out of network. It's a three thousand dollar deductible. I've gotten nowhere towards that deductible. So consequently, I pay whatever Medicare pays, and I pay the other twenty percent out of my own pocket if the doctor hits me up for it, and most of them do. Okay. So it really is, I mean, it is just, it's absurd. It's horrible. It's terrible. And I, uh, you know, these insurance companies, they don't give you anything back. Today, uh, we, they called, at the, at the dentist's office, they called my insurance for the dentistry to see how much they would pay on everything. And I don't know if this was because we were out of network or just because this is what they do. She said, well, you know, they only will pay. They you could have them say, well, we pay for everything, but they will only pay what they think the job is worth. And so, you know, the doctor's visit was maybe so much, X number of dollars, the consult or whatever, $95, let's say, 
okay, for the consult, because she just walked in, looked at my mouth, said, it looks nice, see you later, okay. Uh, and they said they'd only pay 30. And on the cleaning, which was 150, they would only pay 70. You know, so I mean, even though I'm going to get some money back, it, it's excuse me, I have an itchy nose. I always have an itchy nose. Uh, I just, you know, it, it's just really um, a lot of money to put out. And you know, I'm on a fixed income now, and I don't like to put out money at all. And so I'm very careful about the money I do put out. And to say to a dentist, ah, I don't want the X-rays, but if I had the full insurance, I could pay for the the X-rays would be no problem. But the, these insurance companies, especially Blue uh, Oxford, which is a part of United, they're so pissy about all of this. I mean, they're just terrible. So, I mean, girlfriend has a lot of doctor stuff, so she probably put out the thousand already, and now she's getting them to pay for it. But, geez almighty, I mean, I just think the government has to do something about these insurance companies. You know, there was a time when insurance companies, medical insurance companies, were not-for-profit companies. They were just um, um, non-profit companies, and uh, they, could, they weren't allowed to make a profit, and any profits that they did make, they would turn back into the company or into keeping the prices low, and the cr prices stayed low because it was not-for-profit. I think we have to go back to that again. I think we have to go back to non-profit medical insurance. And then I think you'll see prices go down. I also think that we also have to go after the insurance companies that insure the doctors. The kind of money that doctors are having to pay for liability insurance on their practice is incredible. So bad that a lot of doctors I have known over the years have had to quit having their own practice and go to work for like an HMO. Uh, I had a doctor, my doctor before Dr. Kenish was his, his, his his associate, and she was a very good doctor. And one day I get a note: I'm I'm leaving the practice. I'm going over to Mount Sinai. She gave in to the uh, to to working under the the mantle of a large organization where she didn't have to pay things like, you know, liability insurance and things like that, malpractice insurance. I mean, the price on that, I hear doctors pay $100,000, $150,000 a year for malpractice insurance. What, what kind of a deal is that, folks? What kind of a deal? So anyway, it, it, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, skeezy. And so that was my whole thing with, with my medical thing today. So I, I, I uh, uh, went down to the dentist, and she, the, the, the woman who cleaned did a very nice job. And Sam blasted my teeth with baking soda, and uh, my my two pieces are looking good. But I still got the loose tooth, and you know that's it's going to have to go. And then I'm not going to replace it. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm getting older. I I can get another implant. I have two implants. They're great. Implants are terrific. And if I were 50 years old, immediately I would say, well, I'll just get ready to pay for an implant once this tooth goes. But at my age, why am I going to get an implant? You know, God forbid I should get an implant a year later I'm dead and I paid $5,000, $6,000 to get an implant. So uh, what happened was whenever I got a, a, one of these uh, implants, what she, they would do is I would, they would pull the tooth and the tooth would come out. One self-extracted itself, oddly enough. I walked in with what I thought was a crown and she said, that's your tooth. Uh, and um, I, uh, uh, you know, I, they uh, went through the whole thing, and, and what they do between the time, like when they pull the tooth, they then can't do anything for three months, and then they put in the implant, and then they can't do anything for another three months. All that has to set. In the meantime, your teeth can close together, so you have to pay for a denture that goes in between the teeth to keep them from going together. So I just said to her, I said, what if I get one of those instead of get, and if I ever want an implant, I'm still holding, you know, I'm holding a space for it, okay? And she says, yeah, that would work. She says, the only problem that people have with those, uh, uh, those uh, dentures, those little, little, uh, one little tooth, in it, uh, snap it in, it's almost fun. Uh, she said, some people lose them. I said, it's not going to happen with me. You know, might swallow it, but I'm not going to, and I'll just wait 
by the toilet for it to come out. Uh, but anyway. So that's, that's what I'm probably going to do once we lose this tooth. By the way, I'm wearing this hat tonight, this goofy, looks like there used to be a comedian on television named Pinky Lee. Ho, ho, it's me. My name is Pinky Lee. He was a burlesque uh, uh, comic, and he went to do a kid's show on TV and became very popular. But anyway, he had a hat kind of like this, and I bought this on 125th Street. It's a very black person hat, Okay. So anyway, let's turn on the, uh, you know, we have a thing here called Skype. And Skype we use to talk to people and uh, more than one person at a time. And by the way, tonight, uh, I want you to know, is a fill-free night. That doesn't mean a filthy night. It means a fill-free night. Phil is uh, not going to be calling, or at least so he says. So uh, we're leaving it up to you. Uh, and we take, uh, we use Skype if you don't know how to get a hold of us. Just go over to gabnet.net, over the right-hand side of the page, Hull Primer, tell you exactly how to do it. Uh, you download Skype, you give them a few little pieces of information, nothing terrible, you don't owe them any money, it doesn't cost anything to call me, all right? And then you call me, and uh, it tells you how to call me, and then I have to list you as a contact and things like that, because that every, every time you want to call somebody that is on Skype, uh, you have to send them a, th a contact it's the only way you can do it I, I found out the other day you can't just it's not like you can just dial gabnet live which is our our id you have to type in add contact uh, that's the only way you can call it, and you put in the id and i'll see it come up here and as soon as i see it i'll you know i'll do my little my best to make sure that uh, that you're you're all okay and that you're going to be able to call. As soon as I accept you, all you, ha I, you just click on me, and you, on Gabnet, and uh, you're able to do it. Okay, so now where are the callers for tonight? Um, you know, um, got a, lot, a fairly decent amount of people watching me bl blab about my medical situation, uh, but uh, nobody's calling. And we don't hear that familiar sound of the call. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people don't even start listening until about this time. <clears throat> but I don't want to keep talking because you can hear my voice is still a little bit on the uh, on the rough side. Uh, but uh, I'm feeling much better. Itchy nose. Oh, it looks like Jeff Stein may be the first guy on here because uh, uh, yeah, I'm right. Jeff's the first one to call tonight, so he's the anchor. Uh, that we have here, and uh, uh, hello to Jeff. How are you, Jeff? Good, how are you today? Yeah, you're the only guy on right now. How about that, huh? Oh, that's what happens. Uh, that's what happens, yeah. Uh, did you hear my whole thing about uh, medical insurance? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. They're, 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 they're sleazy, aren't they? Well, it's uh, the insurance is the craziest part. Of course, yeah. now that we're seniors, we we get a big advantage, don't you agree? What advantage? You mean Medicare? Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know that that is a complete advantage. You're a little out of sync tonight, but it's not your problem. We we have that problem sometimes on Skype, where somebody else might call and they they might be totally in sync. Um, mm -hmm. No, I tell you what happens. Um, I, I, I I what bothers me is the twenty percent. You know, I just think that it's kind of like they fell just a little short of what they should have done. It's like, well, you know, we're not going to give them everything. We can't give Americans everything. So, you know, let's let's back off on that. And, you know, uh, who, who's who's calling? Who, who is this uh, that's using a phone? Who is this using a phone? Hello? Smooty. Oh, hey. This is Smooty. How, how you doing, honey? This is uh, Schmoody. I'm doing good. Yeah. You know, I saw a picture of you today with a spoon on your nose, which yeah. I know. Oh, you remember that? A, you, you, should tell, you should tell the crew about the time. Remember the pendulette trick you did with the creamer that made the kid at the other table scream while we were out to minute. breakfast? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're going to have to refresh my memory. And I know... There was, well, there was one thing that uh, that Penn got the urge to do, and that was uh, he had heard that if you take 
two like negative and positive electricity. Don't do this at home, folks. And plug, you know, the 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 wires into either end of the pickle, okay? And then you stick the thing in the wall, the pickle will light up. And we and he wanted to see if it would. And so we did it at my house, believe it or not, and he took the pickle and he took two it things worked. and they plugged were you there when we did it? Were you there, uh, Schmoody, when we did it? Or? Well, I remember. I remember hearing live on the air. Yeah, we did all it. about we, it. We, I think we did it on the air too, didn't we? We, we repeated it on the air. You did. Yeah, and you can make. You can light a pickle. Don't try this, folks. I don't want anybody dying a electrical electrical pickle death. Okay. <laughs> We were at a restaurant in Marin, and you took a, li you know, the little things of creamer, and you put it up to your eye, and you go, oh, oh, watch oh yeah, this. Here, no, that's and the, you took that, a okay. fork. Oh, that's the trick. Okay, what you do is you yeah. take you take a fork. First of all, you kind of palm one of those creamers, you know, those little creamer things, right? And and you 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 then take a a a a. a, a fork and to set up the trick <laughs> you take it and and take the tongs and pull down your eyelid and say see what, oh. I can do? see what i can do wait a minute let me show you what else i can do and then you take you got the creamer in your hand and you do this and you take the um the, the fork and you shove it into the creamer and of course white stuff goes flying out <laughs> ah. yeah i used to like to do that in restaurants all the time remember Oh, jeez. Oh, this kid at the table next to us shrieked <laughs> like he had seen this man just freaking stab his eye and all the eye do. And I was like, um. <laughs> I think that was another thing Pendulette taught me. God. It, what, what you learn from evil magicians. Uh, what? Yeah. Yes. Uh, there, was one other, there was one other thing. What was it? There was one other thing. That we, no, you know what? what we were either, I think we were in the Acura, and we're driving down the freeway, and I think we were taunting some guy in another car. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. Wait, no, no, no. So you got to set this up. You, 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 you got to set this up. You got to set this up. You and I both <clears throat> had this, how can I put it? We love to. God, we were pure we, evil. We love to. We love to create. It was yeah, us. We love to create road rage in other people. Okay, yes. so what we would do is like there was this guy and he was speeding or something. He was zip. I can't remember what he was doing. He was yeah, and he had his dog with him. And so I gave him the finger. So now he's like in yep. front of me and he's doing whatever. And I go, you want to get him going? He's here? like motherfucker, pull yeah. over so, right so now. So I, like, yeah. bitch, we'll pull over yeah, right so, now. So I go, I give it the pull over thing. I pull over, you son of a bitch. Come on, let's yep. have it out. Pull over. <laughs> so he pulls over and we just keep going. You know. We give him the finger, and it was the look on the dog's face. Yeah, there was a dog in the car, and I felt sorry for the dog that he had put up with this master. But anyway, I'm telling you, good times, good times. That's when my family knew this is a good man. Well, it, it, what it was about you, okay, is I never really hung out a lot with guys. I was too busy fucking women, okay. <laughs> And so yeah. I had no, I had no real, you know, I didn't have guy friends like you have guy friends, you know, where you sit around having farting contests or whatever. And you were my guy friend. You, you were just totally. like, you were just like having a good guy friend. Uh, and you were great. I was the female version of him and he was the male version of me. It was perfect. Now I got to tell you the how tall are you, Kathleen? I'm six foot. See, six feet tall. And a blonde. I mean, you yeah. dated short brunettes. I love short brunettes. That was my type of woman. Here I am with a tall blonde. Nobody can believe it. And you were tall. I mean, you. this woman worked for UPS. She literally could take a 27-inch television set and carry it up five flights of stairs. I was just amazed by it. The best. Okay. But we never fought. Except on, I think, two occasions. Nope. Two occasions. And one of them was in, 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 fr in uh, Italy. And we were in the world's worst traffic jam. It's like 
all or, traffic just or I'll spill or something. And I got mad, and she was getting mad, and finally, at one time, I think you told me, "Shut the fuck up," or something like that. <laughs> and you looked at me, and I went, "I better shut the fuck up because this woman could beat the crap out of me." <laughs> And uh, there was another time in the marina where you yelled at me or something. But uh, outside of that, we never fought. We got along very well. We got along well. We got along so well. And I could watch you. Remember, you'd be playing video games and you'd be so pissed. But, man, it was the best. Yeah. 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 So, anyway, you know, that that was then and this is now. And here I am talking about in health insurance. I know. Uh, it just makes me sick. If well, we, I'm going to let you go. Okay, kiddo. One of these days, you got to turn on that camera and let everybody see what you look like. <laughs> uh, probably tomorrow, if I can. Yeah. yeah, okay, because I, uh, you know, I just found today where some of the, uh, some of the uh, Christmas pictures we had for our Christmas card, where we, oh, hi those? where we hired your cousins or your niece and nephew. And, my nieces and yeah, my and, nieces and nephews. And went to and Sears nephews. and got cheap oh, photo a cheap photograph taken for Christmas, and we sent them out there. I was wearing a sweater, and you were wearing a very dowdy dress, and the kids were un un. They were flipping the fuck out, yeah. and it was the best picture from the Schwarzmans. From the Schwarzmans, and I <laughs> sent it to everybody, and they went, "You got married? When'd you have the kids?" They really bought it. They really bought it. Anyway, Schmoody, good talking to you. Good, good talking to you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay. It's, uh, it's that Schmoody. Now, let me see here. Where is everybody else? What, what happened? Did I lose everybody else? Son of a bitch. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me just call everybody back, I guess. Oh, uh, boy. I... I, went, I had some kind of problem here. Somehow when I hung up on her, it hung up on everybody. Yeah. That's, a, that's a new one. I hung up on her and I hung up on everybody. That's really what happened. Jeff Stein, Jeff, add to group call. Let me see here. Call Skype. Let me call him. Hello, are you there, Rob? Rob, are you there? No? Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a Mike. How about Rob? Rob, are you there? Oh, uh, wait a minute. H hold on a second. Let me, uh, Jeff, are you there? No, let me get rid of Jeff. Let me get rid of Rob. And let me then try and call them back. Uh, add the group. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. There you are, Rob. And let me go get Jeff here. Add to group. Uh, call Skype. Well, I don't know. For some reason we're not getting Jeff. I. What happened was I had her... I didn't know you did this. Uh, I had her thing, and it was down below and was saying I was talking to her, and then I hit, uh, you know, hang up on her, and it hung up on everybody. So that's that. <laughs> anyway, Jeff, call us. Call us, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Okay. Anyway, so. It says he's on hold. Huh? Mine says he's on hold. Mine says uh, he does? Wait a minute. Hold on yeah. a second. No, it says add to group. It says, do not disturb for him. If I, and if I call him, I get this. See, I just get the, the white uh, the Because white I think he's phone. still on the line. Hang he's, on a second. Okay. What, what are you going to do? Uh, oh, Alex, I got something for you. Yeah. Oh, here, here comes Jeff. Jeff's coming back online. Okay. What? Alex Coffee. Uh, coffee deal. Oh, really? That's your name on it. Oh really? well, I, I I don't know how unusual that is. Sorry, I hung up on everybody. Yeah, yeah. I I thought that when I would hang up on her and the little extra thing, that that would just hang up on her, but it hung up on everybody. So that's the last time I ever do that one. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, well, let me see here. Um, Oh, here we go. Kevin's calling. Kevin's calling. Hello, Kevin. How are you this evening, sir? All right. How you doing? Fine. Let me uh, let me take my picture and make it smaller, so that you don't uh, you don't look. Uh, so I'm not completely taking away from you, so we can see that beautiful beard. Um, 
Anyway, um, anybody ever, any, any of you guys ever have a girlfriend that was just a, a great, like a great guy friend? No. No? It, it, yep. you, it, you, you missed yeah. something. You, you did? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was just, you, you think you, you two are crazy. We were just as crazy as you two. Yeah. But worse. Yeah. Well, uh, Kathleen uh, Schmoody is nuts, okay? She's crazy. She's wonderful crazy, but she's crazy. And I had quite a, quite a, a time with her, uh, you know. And uh, it wasn't, it, it was one of those relationships that, yeah, there was sex and lots of it, but that wasn't, that wasn't the bond, you know. Uh, what, what the bond was was really a very strong friendship. And I don't know that we could ever have ever gotten married or been husband and wife. That was the kind of uh, nature of the relationship. But, you know, there are all different kinds of relationships in this world. And as you get older, I think you start to realize that. Like, Jeff, have you been married just once or have you been married more twice. than twice? So yeah. uh, I was talking about this with my ex-wife, Ronnie, who, by the way, starts chemo today, so I send my best out to her. But, uh, but with... Uh, with uh, uh, Jeff, uh, you must feel like we were talking about that the first marriage is always a mistake. You know, it, re it really is. Like, why did we get married? Huh? I don't know. Like, it was too premature. Is the yeah, how old were you when you first got married? Uh, I was like 22. 22. So, and it yeah. sounded like a good idea at the time. Everybody said, we're going to, gee, I can hardly wait till I get married. And then you get married and you realize, <clears throat> you know. It's uh, uh, not very good, uh, and so we didn't so, have a good uh, book on what to do. You didn't have a book, you know. That's right. And and so, the second marriage, you were a little more thoughtful about it. You can were more cons you considered it more. You weren't exactly going to go jump off the, fly off the handle with that one, right? Was it, well, I mean, a good part of it is. Uh, we lived together for a while, yeah, substantial right time before we got married, yeah. So and and we were a little bit more mature. I don't, I don't want to call us old people. You know, we're in their thirties or whatever, uh, mid thirties. But um, uh, at the same time, I think any other kind of marriage it, it, for me, it's difficult to be married. I, I think it's a challenge it, well, on a daily basis. Yesterday I was talking to somebody, I won't say who, but it's a friend of, of, uh, of Marjorie's who spent considerable time in jail, in prison. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I won't say why she was there, but the, the story is a, is a big one in Connecticut, and it had to do with a, a child who died under a nanny's care, and this nanny was then somehow tried and convicted and went went to prison for like 20 years mm -hmm. and but uh over for one reason or another somehow girlfriend got to know her uh they communicated a lot and things like that and when she got out uh, uh she uh you know marjorie was very good to her and friends with her and so on and then she disappeared for a while we didn't know why finally she just heard from her and she said Hey, guess what? I got married about three years ago, mm -hmm. and you know, so she put me on the phone with her to say hello, and I say hello, and I say congratulations. Uh, how's the marriage? And she says, Well, you yeah, know, it's marriage. And I was about ready to say to her, It's the same as prison. <laughs> <laughs> but I decided not to. You know. Uh, <laughs> You, you could say it's the same, except you wear you just wear different clothes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, you know, I uh, uh, that was my second great joke after the one I told Ronnie when I said, you know, cable companies are worse than cancer. Uh, <laughs> ama amazing these these similes I'm creating these days in my life, you know. Um, but uh, boy, am I feeling better today? You know, I have a little bit of a feels like heartburn. Yeah, don't worry, it isn't medical. It's uh, I think it may be the steroids that they gave me. 
Mm. But anyway, anybody else here married uh, more than once? I was. You were? Oh, I didn't yeah. know you were married twice, Rob. Yeah, yeah. I thought I, but this... I didn't get married young. I, I got married the first time around 37. Okay. And uh, and uh, it was a huge mistake. Now, why was it a huge mistake? Well, because I married a woman who I knew had problems. She had uh, uh, compulsive disorder. She was bulimic. Um all kinds of things that made uh, that made the relate. We were together five and a half years before we got married, and I should have run. Instead, I didn't, and I figured, ah, we'll work it out. Yeah. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And we only were married for about a year and a half. Wow. So not a good, not a good situation. Yeah. Although we didn't part as enemies. Well, why did like, you marry? You know why why did you marry? Was it just an impulse? Was it just? <sighs> no, it wasn't. After five years, it's not an impulse. You know what it is? It's it becomes you. You're together with somebody for so long, and people just see you as this couple, and you just do it. Now you know, let me ask just, you this question. This is I asked somebody this once before, uh, uh, years ago. They had been going with each other for 10 years, and then they decided to get married. And I said, did anything change? And they said, yes. But they couldn't put their finger on it. Well, see, I, I tried to get her to, to live with me first because I had an inkling. I had an inkling that she wasn't mature enough to be married. Yeah. And that it wasn't going to work out. And I could not get her to, to, to do that. So... Yeah. I said, you know what? We either we're going to break up or we're going to get married. And I took the the chance, and you know, my gut instinct was correct. It yeah. Didn't work out. Well, uh, uh, you know, sometimes you take a relationship like that and you get married to see if you can if you can break it. You know. Well, you know, I I put up with so much. You know, she had all kinds of problems. She had um, one day she came home. And she was arrested. <laughs> she was arrested for what? Yeah. What for what? For shoplifting. What? Yeah. And she lied to me, told me that, and, and not only that, she was arrested for shoplifting where she worked. No. Oh. And so, and, and so I had to actually drive her to the police station to turn herself in. It was so many problems, so much. I would Why say, I, I, I would say that's a problem. <laughs> I could write a book. I've had a very interesting life. I've, I've uh, had a great shit. First, she stole so, your heart, and then she stole everything else. Oh man, she was she was a compulsive shopper. She had more clothing and more. I mean, you know, sounds like you married a nutcase. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Kinda. So you got out of that one. So, yeah, so and then I was single for a long time until I met Bless. I yeah. mean, I was single. I thought I was over. I, I had no plans. How did you meet to Bless? Ever get married again. I was, believe it or not, we were. I was online when I was living by myself, and I was online um, in a karaoke room singing. Oh, oh that, I, that I would have to hear. <laughs> and she messaged me after I sang. It was on a. Did you ever hear of a service called Pal Talk? No. Yeah, yeah. So we were there's a karaoke there's a few karaoke rooms in there, and I happened to be in one, and I was singing a song, and she messaged me after the song saying, "Wow, you sing really nice," and we started talking, and then she told me she was from the Philippines, and I was like, "Yeah, right. I'm going to be yeah. interested in having yeah. a long distance relationship," but I just couldn't get her out of my head after that, and right. so I hit her. You know, you can you can go invisible from somebody, and yeah. I I spent a couple of days. And then I was like, ah, oh, you know, I really want to talk to her again. And then I became uninvisible, and she chatted me up right away. And one thing led to another, and that's what happened. We got married. Wow. Well, so I went through all the, the you know, mo you know, having to get her, you know, uh, a green card. And, well, and, that, and you've been married now for quite a while. Just four years. Four, well, four, just four years. We're, Mar Marjorie and I are, what, five years, I think. You know, we got married in 2013. <laughs> yeah, um, coming was, up our anniversary now, November 2nd, will be yeah. our 
And, and you would consider this a successful marriage, right? Yes, yes. I'm not, and I'm not doing it again for sure. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, you two seem to get along very well. I've been with the two of you, and it's you know, very nice lady, you know, and uh, uh, it's a challenge because you know, like with all this moving stuff and all the stuff that's going on, there's a little bit of a language thing still, and she doesn't have a lot of the experiences that other people have so a lot of you know all of the work and all of the planning and all this stuff lands on me to do like i was like shit i gotta order 15 gallons of paint now thinking about it today there's no one she doesn't help me with that stuff she helps me pick things out we went shopping tonight we we bought more furniture and stuff but to plan it and do all that you know it's it falls on you and is it simply because she has a language barrier? Because she's never done stuff like this before, too. Yeah. And she yeah. doesn't know. Like, she doesn't know that, you know, she doesn't know what how health insurance works. And she doesn't know how, um, you know, I have a, a you well, know. How, how, old, really how old is she? 38. 38. Okay. So, but she, so, and she hasn't had any of that experience at all. It's very different over there. Uh, now, she was born in the Philippines, so how is it different over there? It's just the, the complications of life here are tremendous compared to over there. Wow. They don't have all of the, uh, you know, it, it's just very different. Like, she built a house over there for her parents. Very different from building a house over here. There's no attorneys and there's no the rules and the regulations and the differences between here and there are stark. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, she just, it's its a whole new, everything's new. Well, well, you're building a house now and, and, and you're both building it from the ground up. But basically, there's a company doing this for you and you really go and pick from plan A and plan B and, yeah. and you, this you stuff like that. Plan, so how, how, difficult, plan. how difficult outside of making those decisions is it for you because there's this company taking care of all the rest of it? Well, the difficult part is planning is, is life, right? So, for example, I, I have to work full time and I'm busy. Yeah. But then again, like say I, I have to balance next week. And, you know, there's a million little things that go along with it, right? I, I, just tonight, I was like, shit, I haven't put in the change of address form yet. So I put the change of address. And I've got next week on Tuesday morning, I've got Verizon coming. No, no, no. I've got, I've got uh, satellite coming. Yeah. Uh, I've, got, uh, I've got furniture being delivered. I've got painters coming on Friday. I've got... Um, I, bet we're not gonna hear, I bet we're not going to hear from you next week. <laughs> it's. I hope that within two weeks the studio is back up. Oh, it, uh, well, I do too because, because I'm start, getting a little. Start, I'm getting a little sick of the same promos. Yeah, I the the stu- the. I'm tomorrow. Um, I mean, a week from tomorrow, I'm on vacation. It's yeah. the day before we move. Yeah, and so I'm I'm going to coordinate. I'll be back and forth to the house next week. I'm not traveling next week. I'm staying here local. Yeah, and I fact that I'll be working a lot out of the house while I'm babysitting and being there and um, getting everything set, settled. And then that Friday, I have to break everything down here, like my office, all my equipment and everything, get it ready because Saturday they come and pick it all up and they move it. Yeah. And then that following week until the first, I think until, until Monday, the 2nd of October, I'm off. And so between getting the house in order, um, and then hopefully I'll have some time to build a studio yeah. uh, the latter part of that week, at least partially. Now, you know. Now, you, so, you built a house before, though, right? Second, this is the second yeah, time I've yeah, done this, yeah. right? What, 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 and the last. What were you going to say, Kevin? So, Rob, have you been able to go over there to your house and sneak wires in the walls and stuff for your studio? Oh, no, no. All that is done. The house is all completely wired. Um, I have our outlets where I need them. I've got Cat Five wired throughout the house. <clears throat> all that was predetermined and pre-wired by the comp by a company. Every yeah, every, that, every a of times when we were building our place, I, I ran over, ran speaker wires and things like they that. Wouldn't across the walls. That. They, oh, wouldn't they wouldn't let you do that. Oh, they wouldn't let me either, but they didn't know I was doing it. <laughs> and they didn't. Oh, they really? Because I mean, they're they're pretty. Uh, 
Well, you didn't see the wire. Well, you, but you're going to have Ethernet coming yeah. out of the walls in every room in the house, right? Not every room. I didn't bother with every room, but I put it in the rooms that, uh, you know, like my office it is. It's in the bedrooms. Yeah. It's in the living room. Um, that's pretty much it. I, I'm not looking for, I don't need Cat 5 in the kitchen. And will one Wi-Fi take care of the whole house? We'll find out. Because here, I have to have extenders and stuff. I have to have an extender. But you have plaster, wind, uh, I, plaster I, walls. I, I wish I could show you these walls. You can't get through them. You know, yeah, you'd, have take a pick, you'd have to take a pickaxe to them. Yeah, well, you have some, some structure going in between it to hold the walls. Like, yeah. Well, you're on what, the sixth floor or seventh it's floor? Eighth floor. Eighth, eighth floor. And, is there, and there's people above it, too? Right? No. No. No, top I'm on the floor. top floor. Oh, this one? Okay. Yeah, I'm on the top floor. Um, <clears throat> you know, in the apartment so, that, you know... Oh. Hopefully next week by, well, I should say by the end of September, there'll be at least a mock part of the studio up yeah. that, uh, although yeah. I, I, we spent more money than I expected. We bought a new bedroom, a new, a new bed and uh, headboard and all that. And we bought, um, <coughs> know, seems like we're always buying. Oh, because we got that new TV, uh, we bought a, a stand for, uh, to put the TV on in the bedroom. And uh, one other thing, they furniture. Didn't, so they didn't give you a stand for the TV set. N the TV came. We got that at, at uh, Walmart for two ninety nine. I, I, I know, but what I'm saying but is, it didn't come with legs on it. Oh, it has legs, oh, but I, I gotta have something to put it on. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I needed that, and so, but I wanted to buy, and I've been talking about this. I really wanted to buy that radio console. And have that ready to put in when I built the studio again, but yeah. that's like two grand, and I, I can't justify it as much as I wanted. If I were single, like in the old days, yeah, I'd fuck it, fuck it, yeah. <laughs> but right now, I want to, you know, I've spent a ton of money. I had it here. You have to put in water treatment systems. If you do not, I, my wife asked tonight, we, uh, this morning, we um, we went for our walkthrough. Right? Yeah, they take you through the house. They show you all the different features of the house. They take you down to the basement and they show you the sump pump and all the stuff and, and so my wife pointed out we have sliding glass doors down our basement isn't a basement it's a walkout and we've got <laughs> sliding glass doors that take you out there and she's pointed out she goes do you guys clean the windows because they were they're they're all you know filthy and the guy said that's not dirt that's from the water because we've been watering your lawn it's the, the the water is filled with sediment and it just it's you got to put you've got to put a water treatment system in softener, so yeah. a softener but you can't put a softener outside because a softener uses salt and that will kill everything we, so in a, you hook it up to the right pipe system you do all right so you've got filthy ours, which you've got what you're saying is set up for it and we had to put it on the cold water but it only goes into the house it doesn't go into the Sprinklers right. or anything. But I want to put underground sprinklers in. And in order not to destroy that, you've got to, what I'm doing is I'm putting in this this ionizer system. It somehow charges the, uh, yeah. the yeah. water and it doesn't let any of the particles stick to appliances or to the, the heads yeah. on the sprinklers and all that yeah. stuff. So I spent like three grand for this five stage treatment system which yeah, yeah. takes the sediment out it does the ionizing it's a pre-filter it's a under the sink filter in the kitchen that'll lead to the refrigerator uh it's the, you know something it's, this you know, is interesting uh, we're probably losing audience over this i was just looking and the amount of viewership has gone down a little bit uh, uh because i think we're talking about something that i find fascinating rob but that most people, especially living in big cities, are, don't deal with. You know, I don't think I've never had to deal with even buying a house. I've never owned well, a, a house in my life. Have you ever owned a house for John? You live in New York all we, your life? We, no. We rent it all the time. Yeah. And and Kevin, are you there? Also didn't have a wife either. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, are you there or did we lose you? I think Kevin said he's built a house because he was saying he put the speaker wire in oh, okay. when he went there. All right. Uh, sure, and, and, and Jeff, did you build a house? 
Can't hear you, Jeff. Jeff, you got to turn on your mic. Uh, I never had a complete house, but I did modify a house. Yeah. And, you know, built like a thing, like a whole garage area. And then also it was changing the structure. And uh, so, so you had, you, you had, you had like some that. of that adventure. How about you, Mike? You ever have to build a house? No, this house here belonged to my parents. And they bought it from my cousin uh, 30 some uh, 50 some odd years ago. Really? So you yeah. grew up in that house? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I bought it from my parents, you know. Just my parents and I got an agreement together. When I pay the rent, I'm paying the house payment at the same time. It's yeah. already got it all paid off now. Well, so it's mine. The thing, the thing that got to me is wow, I, I, never nice. bought, I never bought a house because of the business I was in. Because, you know, you it, with radio, you always had to go where the work was. And as, uh, I may sneeze any moment now, which means I'm going to have to kill the mic, and I'm also going to have to get a tissue. Uh, because I've got allergies this year. You can't believe. Hold on. Okay. So I was just going to say while you're sneezing, uh, <laughs> I only, I've had five different houses. Yeah, no, that's a lot. A yeah, that's more. Some more, of them are more, more, it's more houses than I've had wives. There you go. But anyway, you know, the thing is that I've never gotten a house because, in my profession, uh, you were always you know it, 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 you. It wasn't like if you're a, a oh I don't know what a, a, a salesman. Well, there are twenty thousand sales jobs in San Francisco. Uh, but if you're in radio, how many announcing jobs are there in San Francisco? So you've got to go from city to city looking for the job. I, j Rob knows what I'm talking about. Um, yep. And so, so you're I, traveling. Yeah. So I never had the the sanctity of a job where I felt, hey, I'm going to be in this town <coughs> forever, and I can buy a house. Well, I wish I'd bought a house when I first moved to San Francisco because I was there yeah. for 17 years. I would yeah, have you'd a have sold it for a mint too. Yeah, I, yeah and I would have. I, oh. I, I would have probably sold it by then. And even if I didn't sell it and had to go somewhere else, I could still keep making the payments on it. You know, and I, that's the biggest mistake I ever made is I never bought a house at that point. But I didn't know, if, you know, in 1980 whether I was going to be there in 1981. So uh, uh, living that kind of life never allowed me the ability to have, own a home. And now I kind of own a place because uh, by virtue of the fact that the Marjorie made a very good investment, didn't realize she was, <coughs> but she lived in an apartment and they went co-op and she bought it and now it's worth four times what she paid for it, you know? Uh, the wisest yeah, I made money on my house. Yeah, the wisest investment she ever made. Um, uh, I think, I don't know. It, it's worth it's, it, it's worth about four times what she paid for it, at least nice. three, you know. So, uh, it, 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 but I wish I had bought a house back in San Francisco, because you know even if I left town, I could rent it out, you know. But no, yeah, and it it would have been worth a heck of a lot more money now. Yeah, if I had bought it, well, I wouldn't have been in San Francisco. I probably would have bought in Marin. It doesn't still, matter. It if you're matter. in the Bay Area at all, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Really? And what you can get for the house for the rent? Oh, it'd be, my, clean, uh, it'd be clean house. My mother-in-law yeah. is up in Cupertino down from Apple there. Yeah. And they bought a house, I don't know, back in the 60s or 70s. And it's 1,200 feet, you know, small little three-bedroom, two-bedroom, three-bedroom. And it's... The one across the street sold her for one point four million. Oh, wait a minute! What's happening here? Are we having cat in less fights? than a in less than a week? And there was a bidding war, and they paid cash. <laughs> you scare the cat, Rob. What, what were we having? I, yeah, I guess so. They were starting the the the, the little guy. The, he's the big one, though. Jumped up on the bed and he started to do this at, at the other one who's sleeping right here. And they, I was—I thought there was going to be a fight, so I figured I'd put a cat fight on. And we could bet on him. We could yeah, bet, yeah, but it, it turned out he saw the camera and said, oh, I won't do this. And he walked away. Uh, hey, did you guys get a call from... If, if it was X-rated, Ted Cruz would have watched. Uh, yeah. 
Get fired. Do you, do, right, but we'll get to Ted Cruz in a minute. But do you, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> do you think he was he that put on that porno film on uh, on the no. internet? I would doubt it. He's blaming he it would. on an assistant. Right. But. Mm. You know, somebody was Hit saying, wrong I, can, I can't remember what like show I was watching, of, uh, like TMZ uh, or something. That, that, that's the danger of having somebody work in your shit. <laughs> right. And, uh, well, TMZ, uh, I, uh, the, the guy there said, yeah, when well, my kid says that, I, I, I don't. Uh, oh, I know what it was. It was uh, it was Jimmy Kimmel. He says, if my kid were to tell me that kind of thing, I go, sure, you didn't put it on. You know, <laughs> I, uh, but anyway, what were you going to say, Mike? Did you guys get a call from Apple Computer today on your phone? No. Yeah, I got a call saying, do not use your Apple Computer doing financial deal. Call this number, 1-844 number, hmm. and, and, and dial 1, hit 1. So, I guess it was a, a program glitch somewhere, I guess. No. No, it's, no. It, it's a robocall trying to yeah. sucker you in. And they do that with uh-huh. pop-ups, too. I called them the other day on a pop-up I got, and they don't do that shit. Period. Okay. Hey, so, so it's, just is like, it's just like the Microsoft calls. Is, is the new Apple location near Cupertino? Yeah. It's right smack in the middle of it, yeah. Oh, okay, because I know that they've got a new campus that they were talking about. I yeah, watched the, the Apple event. The spaceship. Uh, yeah. The spaceship. Yeah. yeah. I've been so watching that, is, that get built. So you know, that is in yeah, Cupertino. It get yeah. Built. yeah, it's uh, right okay. behind Stevens Creek there. Do you know why that is so, that building was so expensive? There isn't a pane of glass in that building that isn't curved. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. And the entire top of that saucer is nothing but solar panels. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and all the neighbors are pissed off. Why are they <laughs> pissed off? I- because the traffic on uh, Homestead, which is one of the side streets, was, you know, just a quiet little street. Now it's just packed with people, and people want to park over there. And but their values, their home values, are going up because they, all the people they, from Apple want to buy them all up. But they have a lot of uh, they have a lot of space there for parking, don't they? They have underground parking there. Yeah, it, it it doesn't look like as much parking as for the building, but they also built one of those urban villages next to it, yeah. so they've got apartments and condos and all that stuff so these people can literally never leave work well they showed they showed on uh, on their recent report uh what do you call it uh the, the steve jobs theater yeah yeah which you know, that's where that's they did on the, the campus there too that's where I, they did the event from it i thought pretty nice i thought it would be a bigger theater though it's all yeah. underground too yeah that part is uh that part goes down underground right and uh, the top part is just like a lobby or whatever. Well, they figure they buried Steve. They may as well bury you. That's why it's the Steve Jobs Theater. <laughs> underground, underground in in, in earthquake uh, county, country. Yeah. That doesn't make sense, does it? No, it doesn't. Yeah, hey, whatever happened to Google's barge that they had uh, near uh, Treasure Island? What? They had a, I think Google had a barge, I think. They were doing some type of research on it. Or uh, Google's got all kinds of problems right now. Yeah. Harassment yeah. suits and all that shit. Really terrible. I think every company does. It just It's who gets... Because think about it. It's human nature. Yeah. Every, every company does, I think. Who's getting exposed and who's got the balls yep. to sue them. Exactly. I know like uh, Uber's going through that. Yeah. Ubers, they, they've been going through lawsuits right and left. Yep. Every time they sell one, here comes another one. Part two, part three yep. coming up next week. Uh, oh, Rob, yes, we do have a uh, that coffee place that you guys were talking about. The uh, Phil's? Yeah, here in Sacramento. Well, that's cool. I have. Did you go? No, I want to go tomorrow morning. I want to go early in the morning. They open up at 6 in the morning. Yeah. That's a lot of money for a cup of coffee. Yeah. I'm just going to walk in and see what it's like. I thought Starbucks was expensive, but that makes it feel cheap compared to what they're charging. Well, you know, I, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I, you know, I, I didn't start drinking coffee till 
uh, till I was in my 40s. And then I learned that if you drank coffee in the morning, I could do a better show. I was doing morning shows, and that mm -hmm. made me start drinking coffee. And I got to tell you, I'm a coffee slut in that I don't give a shit as long as it's coffee. You know? I do. I mean, I do. Really? Because I drink it black with no sugar. Really? So if coffee isn't really good, it's really bad. Yeah. I never like I put coffee, nothing really. in it. I put nothing in it. Really? So it's got to be good coffee. Hmm. Okay. Does it have to be pooped out of a cat or does it? <laughs> no. I, yeah, Jack on Yes, yeah, that's uh, the coffee's special too. Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Here we go Jeff. back to coffee again. We were on coffee so, last night. Uh, I'll, I'm going to switch uh, coffee just a little bit. So I, I used to drink a lot of coffee, and I'm not supposed to drink coffee now. Yeah, uh, bad for medication combination. So anyway, right. but I was thinking about when I was a kid, and if I got thirsty yeah. and I was outside, yeah. you just get a rubber hose. Yep. You turn it on and you drink the water right out of the hose. Yeah. If I saw that to my grandkids, they would almost get me arrested. Really? Why? Oh, they think it's poison. Well, you know that <sighs> it wasn't in truth. With water that comes out of who knows where. Can you taste it? I could still taste that taste. It did not taste, taste rubber, like a yeah. glass of water. Yes. And yeah. that had to be bad for you. That had to be bad for you. Well, it did. But did you die of it? Did it make no. you throw? No. But you're it right. Weird, that's all. <laughs> it, it did taste weird. It, well, I, um, um, hmm. You know what used to taste good to me on a hot day? Remember Coca-Cola with its Original. old formula? And it always came in a glass bottle. Not, yes. not aluminum. Yep. Not half glass, half plastic. Not plastic, but glass. That green and, glass. And on a hot day, there was nothing better than an ice cold Coca Cola in one of those because the glass literally cold. made it cold. Remember how good that would taste on a hot day? <laughs> you can't did find you see, that. Take, did you take the bottles back for? A, I think it was a penny, a penny a bottle. Oh yeah, sure. But I mean, it but was one of those uh, oh, also Coke the, machines in the. Also, the Coke. My dad had, what? Coke, my dad had a Coke machine at his uh, gas station. Yeah. You know, and I was old... just going to say that when we, I was a yeah. kid on summer vacation, my buddy and I used to drive our bikes at, to the gas station and, and get the those. Yeah. You, remember, the it had like a round, like an oval thing, and you would pull yep. that arm down, <laughs> and yes. the, little, the bottle would or, come out. Yeah, the one that you lifted up was like a nice chest, and you slid the bottle across a track, mm -hmm. and then put the section yes. in, pulled yeah. it out. Then yeah, pull it out. There's like a coke deal uh, where you can pull, yeah. uh, pop the top. Yes, we've been just to, yes. by the way we, we, refilling we, that we, thing, but I loved it. it. Was cold coke. Yeah, let me tell you, we've been joined. We've been joined by. We've been, we've been filled with ice. Also, yeah. we've been joined by. Let me just say by Renee, and by Tim. Hello, Renee. Hello, Tim. Anyway, no, I just love how cold that was, and they don't do them in glass anymore. And I want to tell you something what was so structurally amazing about the Coca-Cola bottle. You know, that Coca-Cola bottle was only about six ounces of Coke. But they well, made that's... it look like more because they, they did the, you know, the, 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 they, used to call, the they called it the May West shape to the bottle. Mm. So that well, you know it looked like there was more than you were getting because it was higher than it should. Oh, you could this slam was, the whole thing, yeah. Yeah, you could <laughs> slam was, the this whole This was in the days before those big, huge, massive, extra-large sodas that we all drink today. But you remember yeah, yeah. also Coke was so wedded to that bottle shape, which was so unique yeah. to them, yeah. that, they, like that they, wait a minute, let me finish. Uh, that they, uh, when they went, finally went to like the uh, 32 ounce bottles, you know, the big bottles, they mm -hmm. kept the shape, even though it was plastic. And I think it was mm -hmm. originally even glass, but they kept the shape for a while. Now they don't keep the shape anymore. Yes, Tim. Well, you know, you can get, uh, you can get those uh, glass bottles of Coke still. I bought some for a friend, uh, only they're like seven ounce bottles, but they're the same shape. Costco. The Costco same size. Yeah. 
Yeah. Costco oh, they sells. Costco. I bought and, them at the store something, yeah. yeah they Costco also have the regular cane sugar in them, not the, right. the sucrose. Yeah. By the way, yeah. let me let me just let me just say something quickly here. Uh, is that I have been trying Coke Zero Sugar. Yeah, that's the way you're supposed to say it, not Coke Zero Sugar. Uh, it's Coke Zero Sugar, and I got to tell you, I like it better than the other Coke Zero. It oh really, no! It, oh my God! You have to take off back uh, everything that you said about Coke uh, for doing that. Well, <laughs> the problem was I went out and bought a bunch of cases of Coke Zero just in case I didn't like it, and I That's really, right. I, six back. I, I really do like it. I mean, it, it Coke Zero is great, but the Coke Zero sugar is just it, they they got the formula right. It's really good. Yes, Renee. Uh, two questions. One, Jeff, is the reason you can't have coffee is the caffeine? And then that was going to be my question about Coke Zero sugar. What did you say it was called? Coke Zero Sugar? Coke yeah. Zero Sugar? Yeah. Does it have caffeine in it? Uh, yes. I, I think it's the, for me, it's the caffeine. <clears throat> but it could be almost anything. Yeah, you can't. You can get... You can it's you know, really like good it. coffee, water, water process decaf. If you ever want to talk decaf, I'm will be more than happy to discuss it. Uh, yeah, there are the bottles. Yeah, yeah, and Costco. So these, the, the issue with this is because Marty left Coke. So let's make it let's make it easy. These are called Mexican Coke, and the reason it's called Mexican Coke is because it's not bottled in the United States, and it'll come in California. It comes with a label that says that. And what they do is they use real cane sugar, they use the original formula, they bottle it for Costco, they ship it through Costco, and um, I think you can get it. I can tell you you can get it at the. Um, I can absolutely guarantee that you can pick up. Mexican Coke at the Rain Store of Costco. Yeah, well, I, I know that they had it for a while. I just don't drink sugar. You know, I've, I've stayed away from that. Although I'm, although it. today I got on the scale and I'm still losing weight, which I'm not happy about. So uh, tonight I had ravioli. Uh, I have, I'm starting to eat all the stuff I couldn't eat, although I'm not going into the sugar stuff. But... Uh, Hopefully I will I will gain a little, you know. I'm a hundred hey, I'm a hundred and eighty two, I think, hundred and eighty one. Yeah. Yes, Tim. Uh, my first job was sorting bottles at an IGA. A lot of Coke bottles. Yeah. And every county back then had a, a bottling plant. It was a a really good jobs program and Coke had the largest fleet of tr uh, truck delivery trucks in the world. At one time. You know, one of the smartest things Coke ever did was World War II. They said, we're going to take, because so they'll feel like they're home, we're going to take Coca-Cola to the troops. And they built plants all over Europe to make these Coca-Colas to give to the troops. Uh, and yep. after the war was over, did they close the plants down? No, all of Europe was now inundated with Coca-Cola. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant marketing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it takes a lot of electricity to recycle aluminum cans. We would save the environment and save a lot of energy if they went back to the glass bottles and started building bottling plants. Yeah, but uh, then again, it probably is terribly expensive for them. You well, know? It, you know what, and it's also a weight issue. I mean, the glasses, when I pick up those cases, 20, because you can only buy the co the Mexican Coke at Costco in a case. And 24 bottles of liquid and glass is gets pretty heavy. Yeah. And then what do you do with the bottles? Do you, Can you take them back somewhere? Can you, are they refundable? Oh, yeah, you recycle. Are refund always. And do they charge yeah. you for the bottles? Well, in California, there's always a five-cent redemption, blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's it's not worth having the conversation over this and how you get this dollars. Mm. Right, go, yeah, the recycled. It, they're everything. Every piece of liquid. Yeah. You might be able to talk to Kevin or soda in California has to comes with a CRV, which is a California rede redemption value. Yeah. Yeah. And it's usually five cents. Nickel or a dime, depending on what it is. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. It's a nickel. Ten percent in Michigan, or ten cents in Michigan. Virginia is free. They don't have any of that. Oh. Well, wait. It's, 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 it's no. a nickel here for recycling. Yeah, but that means you get any money. So if you wanted to get money back, you would take all of your Coke bottles to the Redemption Center, and they would give you price per bottle or weight, depending on which one you well, went the to. By the way, they, 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 uh, they use the uh, weight deal. They okay. actually they weigh the bottles, In and Virginia, they can tell you how, how many uh, pounds it is. In Virginia, do they can? is there a Redemption Center like that? Not that I'm aware of. You could you just recycle it. Okay. No, there's no money back. No, they don't okay. charge you the money up front either. Right. So there's, yeah. but you, but you have a recycling service that will take it from you for free for your trash. Yeah. There's, yeah. On Mondays they come around for glass and all that stuff. You know. Okay. Yeah. Recyclables. Well, it sounds like a better way than what we're doing because California charges five cents and then you get five cents back. But it, <coughs> it's a wash. I'd rather not deal. They would be better been better off not dealing with all of that and do uh, and exactly what Virginia does. But well, but the problem with that is industry. the problem with that is if you do it that if you make it a financial thing, a money thing, more people do it because a lot of people don't recycle. A lot of people just throw it out. Yeah, and uh, and if so, if there's no money to get back, people just say, oh, "Screw it, I'm throwing it out." You know? <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, they they do come on Monday, and so they you get a big blue container, and why not? You know, you throw everything in it. Now, aluminum cans right now per pound is a dollar, a dollar and a half per pound. So it it dropped down from a dollar eighty down to one fifty right now. Yeah, but you can yeah, recycle. You can. Re at my, I may be yeah, wrong. It's like, it's like the stock market; it goes up and down. I, I may be wrong, but I think you can recycle aluminum. Yes. Is yes. That, but you can't yes. recycle All what, aluminum cans. Yes. Yeah. What you can't recycle are those half glass, half plastic bottles, or any half of glass. the plastic bottles. You no, can you recycle glass. glass. Yeah. Depends on what size yes. of plastic. I think. Glass, glass bottles. Some of the plastic ones you bottles. Can. Can Big bottles. bottles. The big I bottles, the uh, eight bucks worth. The two liters oh. you can you can recycle. Yeah. Supposedly, recycle supposedly in the uh, Pacific Ocean, uh, which oh, a lot of you it. people are near, there are these huge underwater islands Oops. of bottles right. of just lots of plastic floating oh, yeah. together. Not even just underwater; it's floating on it as well. You know, it's how many really meters deep and. And, and the size of like about two thirds of the United States, I think they said out in there. It's yeah. absolutely massive. And because we can't see it, because we're not hanging out out in the Pacific Ocean, you know, the most vast majority of people are like, ah, oh, whatever, you know. But there are, there are you know, oceanographers and people are well, absolutely here, eclectic about this. Here, here's a little <laughs> discussion we can have. And because Phil isn't here, there's nobody to disagree with us. We're really fouling our fucking planet, aren't we? I mean, this, yes. is the, this is the place we live, and eventually it's going to be unlivable. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not the fact that we disagree to have somebody to disagree with. It's the fact that there, it's not a realistic or a true basis to disagree with. On the other note, on what you were just saying, I completely agree, but I don't think... All, and this is a state-by-state state thing, and it shouldn't be the entire United States, no matter if I walk into an airport in California or if I walk into an airport in Vermont or Alabama or Florida, I should see three bins. I should see, uh, and the, they're big green ones, and they have three different holes in it. I should see a recycle in every airport in the United States, in every public structure in every government structure, we should be able to recycle our bottles, our plastic, and our paper. Okay, at but I got I got a good question. I got a good question. You know, I have for the longest time separated my bottles from my paper from my garbage. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been very good at that. We have two garbage cans in the kitchen: one for bottles and cans, and the other one for garbage. Right, and then the mm -hmm. papers get piled up and sent out i want to know do they take those cans and put them with other cans or do they just throw them into the same garbage dump no they they, no, no, they, they, they sell it they sell it it's a big market now, alex uh, where i go before i take my aluminum cans 
the guys actually sell the aluminum cans to, I think it's China. Yeah. Yeah. And those guys are making a hell, heck of a profit because on top of that, they pick up also copper wire. They, they, you could sell copper wire mm-hmm. and uh, steel, and all types of steel and stuff like that. But the big, like, like, like you were saying, Renee, the big uh, 24 ounce bottles, you can get more money for those. I think it's like a dollar per pound. Really? Yeah. Uh, 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 Phil. Yeah. Uh, 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 Phil. Uh, Rob has his hand up. So, uh, speaking of what you're talking about, sending this stuff to China, have, did you see the article? I read an article on CNN.com that China is now saying that they are not no longer accepting our garbage. What we were doing is, the, you know, the, the balance of trade with these with these uh, carriers going back and forth is they come here filled with all kinds of merchandise and they go back empty. So what's been happening is we've been sending them all of our garbage and all this stuff and they've been taking care of it. And now they've recently said, we don't want any of it anymore. And now they don't know what to do with it. We don't know what to do with it. Go ahead. It's killing them. A lot of it is um, electronic waste. Yeah. And they're getting in, in deluged with that stuff. And they're creating their own toxic, you know, sites there. <clears throat> with our garbage, with our junk. With our garbage, with our old CRTs, with our old, you know, electronic sure. stuff. And then they have, hey, the, you know, the sweatshops going where they're extracting all the crap out of them. Yeah. And they're getting, oh. you know, having to form kids and everything else over there. Oh, boy. Hey, hey Rob? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, they, I just read a, st- I'll post it on Facebook. But I just saw a scientific paper that they now have developed a fungus that will eat plastic and that's dissolve it up. So, that's, that's actually uh, scary. Well, yeah, what else does it too, eat? That's my question. Yeah. That, 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 that's does it eat the good scary, plastic or man. the bad plastic? Yeah, and yeah, what else does it eat? And, how, you know, and my how artificial they, knee is gone. <laughs> how does they get rid of I mean, what does their extract look like? Or extract look like? So, yeah. Alex, what you're, you know what? We used to have to, in California, in one area of California, we used to have to separate all of our recyclables. And then they figured out that that's too much work for us on our end. And they give us one big container like Rob, and you put every recyclable that they will allow, yes. meaning every yes. recyclable right. that right. the facility mm-hmm. has the ability to recycle, and we'll talk about that in a minute, in one bin. And then when it gets to the recycle plant, you have workers who have big gloves on and put the cans in one place and the paper in another place and this and this and this. So that's an in, So now that we've gone from the, the end user to be able to recycle everything, we've created an industry where we're hiring more people to recycle those pieces. Well, why is it? Why? People- why is it, and is it because of the uh, amount of people that we have here that it's a problem? Wasn't this a problem in the days when, for instance, we talk about Coca-Cola. When it first came out, when beer was coming out, and when I was growing up, they were tin cans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, well, uh, is, is it that because we changed the method of, uh, <clears throat> of distribution from tin to aluminum, from glass to plastic? That all of white, this has uh, changed? White from tin to aluminum. One is, you know, they figured that uh, tin was just uh, too expensive. And aluminum was Do you remember how, how, the, how if you had the cans around too long, they'd rust? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, but see, that makes a good point. It actually break, It would break down fairly easy. Yeah. But also, there's a weight issue. If you were Budweiser and you were shipping cans and cans of beer and you had to put it on a truck to do it, then, of course, you're going to go through tires, the roads. It, Cuts it's a down weight on issue. Load no, well, what's happened is we've, exactly. crea- we've created these ecological problems because... Yes. We, uh, we've become more technologically proficient, and we've learned how to do things cheaper, better, faster, and so on. And in, the, in response to that, we have also created a big toxic mess uh, that, that is called this planet, you know. Well, or, or look at it this way. Well, yeah. Look at this. Here, here's a, a product that we're all very familiar with, uh-huh. and, and it's changed 
for the last 50 years and it continuously makes improvements. And realistically at this point, it's a product that's incredibly lightweight by itself. Uh, you, you can keep your soda inside of there and, and, it, and if it's cold, it transfers the energy to make it cold inside very efficiently and but quickly. you know they've never come up with like a plastic or something that will hold the cold like those those glass bottles of coca-cola i was telling you about would sit there and you'd open up a thing and there'd be some ice in there and there'd be uh the uh the cokes in there and those things if you were traveling with them would stay cold for quite a while these it's things colder this, than the plastic. this plastic uh diet snapple i have here is already warm because the material was thicker, and it's you know it's more well, it's dense. It holds, holds so why cold. don't they create a bottle that has some <clears throat> kind of material in here that holds the cold better? You know what they did do. Money. What oh. they did do. Remember, Coca Cola has come out in the last couple of years with the you know the the May West shaped uh, bottle in aluminum, mm -hmm. uh, and those yeah. those kept the cold better than uh, than any of the other delivery systems. You could you also. Think the product colder. Huh? You think I'm sorry. You think an aluminum can sure keeps it better than plastic. <laughs> keeps it better than plastic because the surface maybe a of little bit, cold. but glass is. Oh, by glass far. is by far the, the, the right. best. Okay. But, yeah. I'm sorry, Jeff. You were going to say something. I apologize. Well, there's also. I'm trying to think about what it was, but there used to be a lot of things that were. Oh, I don't remember. You know, there used to be a can that people used to own for coffee. And and the real yeah. thing was you'd go to work and you'd bring your own coffee in a can and you want it to stay warm and maybe you could have three or four drinks in there and it would stay nice and warm. Because internally. it was a thermos. It was a thermos. That's right. It was a thermos and it had, it had uh, two vacuum yeah. Well, what it was, no, what it was, the inside was glass. It was a, There was a glass well, bottle was inside the vacuum. Vacuum sealed. Vacuum right, sealed. but they also designed them where they're aluminum on aluminum Yeah. with a vacuum system and a filter on the inside that would prevent you from transferring the heat from, from the outside easily. Double so there's all kinds of technical changes that are always changing around. And I think it's a question of economics, and it's a question of uh, environmental stuff. And, okay. and this is all. Uh, this is all. By the way, if you're not if you're not watching us on Facebook Live, we're doing a very visual show tonight. Everybody's holding up whatever bottle they're using right now. Here's my and goosey. Like, yeah, we have a thermos. We have a bottle. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? But wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. What's John? What's John got there? Hold on a second. Let me yeah, bring this up. Let me bring this up. Full the old screen. Thermos. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the, use the house. There we go. This is a, one of those Yeti cups. Hold hold it up higher. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that deal. Okay. There's it. Looks like, I always thought it looked like an artillery shell. Is that? <laughs> are, do you do you still <laughs> use that? Do you still use that? Do you still use that thermos? Oh, it works beautifully. I don't uh -huh. use. I haven't used it for years. Yeah. But it's sitting in. It's been sitting in in a corner of my kitchen table there for. Yeah. Ever and ever. I don't know why, you know, I, yeah. I haven't gone somewhere, but Stanley made it. It's, uh, uh, see, this, this thing here was supposed to take the place wait, of that. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me let me bring that large screen. Hold it up so because along the bottom we have cup? people. So hold it up towards the top of your screen. Just hold it up. Kevin? Kevin? Hold it up. Kevin. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Old, <laughs> what? Yeah, this is a Yeti. It's, current thermos, it's called a what? It says oh, Carl Carl's Jr. Yeah, what? I got a really bad connection tonight. Gave, listen, I'm not hearing you. Yeah. Uh, wow. Well, anyway, you're froze. Let me get rid of my video. There used to be a company in Connecticut that I think manufactured that product. Yeah. Have you got any kind of drink, Kevin? Yeah. This is uh, iced tea in here. Yeah. Uh huh. And how? But this thing will hold. This will hold ice for 24 hours, easy. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, easily. I, 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 okay. Brian, Brian, how about you? What are you drinking? Anything there? Uh, just a, uh, just a plastic bottle. 
yeah. uh, water. I use those flavor enhancers, but, and I, but the, I save the, the bottle. The major commodity here is plastic. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I have it upstairs. That's it's it's readily recyclable now. The dollar up piles. So dollar we have quite a few so, of what Kevin has, too. If yeah, but how many bottles is a pound of uh, plastic? It, it's got to be a lot of a lot of bottles. I can't remember, but uh, my mother-in-law, she's a recycle freak, and she won't walk by a garbage can. It's crazy. She works at Home Depot, and they all save the bottles and everything for her. But over the last, say, 11 years, my daughter was born. Yeah. She's been recycling glass, <laughs> plastic, and aluminum. Yeah. And she's got seven, over seven thousand, almost eight thousand dollars in the bank for her. Good job. Yeah, she's been kicking butt. But see that yeah. the, the price you get back changes though. That that's quite yeah. The problem. It changes it's all the time. Depends on the market. The market, the way the market prices go. Yeah, I you mean, know, it's comical I used... when when it goes to recycling, the one here in Sacramento by me, <laughs> uh, when people bring in their bottles, they go to bars and get all the empty beer bottles, whiskey bottles, and everything else. But now lately, they're, they're accepting the uh, colored glass more than um, uh, than they used to. It used to be, you had to be all clear bottles. Now they will accept that. Milk cartons, mm-hmm. you know, like the bo- plastic uh, milk cartons. Yeah. You can wash those out. You can just uh, recycle those also. Yeah. But yeah. they got to be clean. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Okay. I want to just change this up. Oh, wait, you, you, Rob. Uh, Rob. Ro- <laughs> <It's> me. <laughs> John. The, the New York. The New York spin on this, of course, is a lot of people will throw their will throw their bottles and everything out uh, in uh, clear. In a, once a week, there's a pickup of bottles and cans and stuff with clear plastic bags, and it happens for me. It's Friday night, Saturday morning. Friday night, everything goes out, and then you see all these guys. You know, picking through and getting all the bottles out, and uh, and they, they they make a good, they make a decent amount of money yeah. doing the recycling. You know, they aren't always homeless. Some of them are, some of them are just you know relatively poor. But that's what they do. And some of these guys have, you know, walk walk around with shopping carts full of of, of recyclable bottles that uh, the New Yorkers just throw out. Well, you ever wait, uh, hold on a second, uh, John? Have you ever tried yeah. to? Let's say you have some plastic bottles at home, and maybe you just would like to make some money off of them. Okay? We have to go so somewhere. So you go down and to the most yeah. grocery stores in New York on the side of them, have these recycling machines where you put the bottles in and you get some money out. Well, but, some do, yeah. But can you use them? The answer is no, <laughs> because you've got a line of poor people with, like, uh, uh, shopping carts <laughs> yeah. full of plastic bottles. You can only bottles. do one at a time. And they can only yeah. do one at a time. Right. And and they're there for hours. See, you as the public can never use these machines. Well, they found the best places. They found some of these uh, larger stores and stuff where there's actually a counter somewhere in back. And it's not a machine, and they'll do it. Also, I don't know if it's Outside. still there, but I remember years ago down in the West 50s, there was a company called We Can, yeah. and it was basically meant to – it was a recycling center – for you know, and for everyone, but they felt it would be really helpful for the homeless population of yeah. those because a lot of these, some of these, uh, these uh, guys, uh, you know, gr- grocery stores, the, especially the small ones, won't take back a bottle of something they don't sell because yeah. they have to send. Then they have to the then people they, that they would send it to, <laughs> like about Coke bottles. If they don't sell, they don't sell, you know, uh, Coke bottles in, in glass. They can't recycle them back to the Coca-Cola well, company. <laughs> you know, it'd have to go in with oh, all the oh, all, oh, all oh, regular oh, plastic. Yes, Kevin. The other problem is that the back room. They don't have room in the back rooms because I used to deliver to a lot of grocery stores, and they just that's why they opened up all these recycling centers where anybody can go and take this stuff back. The um, the other thing I was going to get at, and the crap I just having an Alex moment. I can't remember what the hell it was. An Alex moment? Is oh, that what we're yeah. calling it now? <laughs> Is that what we're calling it now, you <laughs> asshole? Thank you for coming on. I got I get CRS all the time too. Can't remember shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but around here, the uh, the blue 
buckets. I mean, if we we got our uh, pickup on Monday mornings, and there's guys parking their vans up the street and walking through the neighborhoods, picking out all the stuff out of the blue buckets, yeah, and then recycling it. I'm oh, always yeah. chasing well, up. Yes, Jeff. Well, when I, when I was a teenager, I was in the recycling business on Mondays only. <laughs> so when trash is out. <laughs> and and here here's the deal. It was newspaper. Ah, oh yeah. You know, yeah. news was a big thing. Mm. We didn't use T V and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Inter- so we had all this New York Times on Sunday. on Sunday and a huge amount of stuff. So I would go and I would go into these houses that were like eighth uh, eight story houses right and you go up and just load them and load them and load them and fill up the car okay <laughs> as much as you could and that was just about enough that you could load the car right. with gas yes mike you know also the other thing is that uh, recyclable is cardboard and pallets yeah. I see a truck pickup load full of pallets going down the street. And I'm looking at it. This guy has a bunch of pallets in the back of his truck, and some of them look like they're ready to fall off the damn truck. Oh, so cardboard's yeah. another big thing. But cardboard pri- yep. prices keep going down, it seems like. Right. I don't know what it is now. Everybody cardboard. buying things on Amazon stuff. There are more boxes coming to our to my yeah. front uh, first floor there. You know, they've got it, and, these, and they all go out in once again. They, we used to be able to take some of the stuff like papers and stuff and tie them, bundle them up. Now they say, no, just shove them all into one of these big uh, plastic uh, bags. I'm thinking, well, isn't the plastic bag, you know, more to recycle than twine is? To, you know? yeah. <laughs> by the I, guess way, it, I guess it broke too much. I don't know. But, uh, by the way, I just want to show everybody something. Um, yes. I had, you know, my installation of Fios here and mm. I had some other guy working here. And I don't know who left this behind, but look at the great flashlight uh, that, <laughs> that, that I got. First of all, on top, you do that. Oops. Yeah. Oh, 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 right. I knew that was coming. Right. Oh, and then wait a minute. I can away. turn that one off and look on the bottom. Yeah. Whoa. Nice. Isn't, isn't that nice? And I and I would I would call up whoever I think owned it. But unfortunately, sure. I don't know which one of these guys left it behind. So, like we believe you. So, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, Alex. Yeah, it's your, it's your uh, Alex, final it's sign up gift. Absolutely. Yeah, you, yeah you know that's what they use those flashlights for, don't you? What? To blind the security cameras as you're breaking into yeah, people's like apartments. Oh, really? Oh, maybe that's yeah. what. Yeah. That's that's well, thank you. I now know how I can make money in my old age. <laughs> no, now you can go, go get your cat back. Huh? Yeah, yeah go get so the cat back. You can go get yeah. the cat back and they'll never know who yeah, was. Yeah, kidnap the cat. Right, exactly. Hey, did, yeah. did you see Phil's comment on Facebook? No, I no. didn't. He had two glasses of hall cab and ribeyes at the Mark Hopkins. Hopkins. Oh, he went to the top of Mark? The top of the Mark? Why not? I, I guess. I don't know what that is. My father used to work there it's as a important. musician and across the street at the Fairmont. <laughs> <clears throat> at the Venetian room, and at the, Vene- the, the Venetian room, the Venetian room every year, we would uh, rent out and and do uh, supper with Schwarzman, which was a live uh, show with uh, an orchestra and everything. Renee knows what I'm talking about, and well, uh, I well, loved working the Venetian room because my father had worked the Venetian room. So, huh. is that San Francisco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a big. Yeah. Be- Who's the radio guy? Who had the radio show in Chicago? Uh, that broadcasts on the, the top of one of the hotels. Well, you know, in those there. days, you always had some guy who had some show that came from some hotel. I yeah, mean, right. my, my father used to do a radio show out of uh, the St. Francis Hotel with Eddie Fitzpatrick's Ooh. orchestra, and I, in fact, have a recording of it, and I can hear his violin. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's amazing. You know, from the St. Francis Hotel. Nice. It's the music of Eddie Fitzgerald, uh, Fitzpatrick and his orchestra. And they would do like 15 minutes, and then somebody else from another city would do 15 minutes, and somebody else from another city would do 15 minutes. That's where I got my love of radio, you know. So, 
Oh, Chicago had Don McNeil's Breakfast Club. Oh, that was I was I was That's the one I ever and ever. Don McNeil. I was a big that was, uh, fan, big fan of that. Wasn't uh, yeah, it? I, it, was it was on, on, on ABC. It was on ABC, oh, it and I actually have a, a kinescope of the television version of it that they did. They would in the wow. early days of television, they would also run it on TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember that as a kid because every morning they would, uh, halfway through the show, let's all march around the breakfast table. And oh, yeah. they would play a march, and <laughs> I would march around the breakfast, breakfast table. Breakfast. Boy, yeah. was I a retarded kid. <laughs> and uh, I listened to it. I was in Chicago, and it was a local. Good like, morning, like, breakfast. Yeah, Wait, I know the song. Good morning, breakfast clubbers, and howdy do ya. Da -da 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 -da. You know, first call to <laughs> breakfast. You know. For all of you out there. For <laughs> all of you out there. How I do you? That. America, how, wait, the breakfast club is on the air. Wait, wait. <laughs> how, how old are you, John? Um, Under 70. <laughs> under, <laughs> under 70, and you remember the breakfast club. Sure, because I was a... Uh, I, that, that, that was good. that went on into the 60s. That wasn't, you know, they did it really. He kept that going, I think, longer than I, re that I remember it too. Don yeah. McNeil in the Breakfast Club. And I got to tell you, the show is was probably the biggest show in radio. I mean, that was like the, the big morning show across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and after the, Arthur Godfrey sort of disappeared, there, was, you know, there, there is some, he wasn't uh, morning, I there was some was. hip hop guys doing a radio show in the morning now calling themselves the breakfast club and that makes yeah. me mad because i want to go where the fuck is don mcneil he wouldn't do fucking <laughs> rap you know and i used to love those old radio shows because i when i was driving a truck at night later at night you could find those stations with the old rangers and the yeah, and those you well, know the old I'll, radio I'll, shows when they had the I'll tell you something, you know, crinkling paper in the background. There, the there, there was a thing that I, I, don't, I don't know if Rob did this, but uh, this is way one of the ways <laughs> I got my appreciation of radio. I lost it. I would take my car and I would go to the top of Mount Tamalpais in the Bay Area mm. at <laughs> night, at like Area. midnight. Yep. And then I would start what we call DXing radio stations. DXing, Because sure. what happened is with AM stations, you had a, a ground wave, which was predominant during the day. But at night, there was a sky wave. And the sky yep. wave could skip as much as thousands of miles. So all of a sudden, yep, you're right, DXing, yeah. and all of a sudden, somebody's saying, WLS Chicago. And you're going, <laughs> boom! And you're listening <laughs> to Chicago. Sure. That's right. I did that. that. I did that with my on my... In my car driving across Vermont when I was in college, and the guy that was that was with me, we were going to to some party at Skidmore or something in New York. And as we were driving over the, this is in the winter, we were driving over the Green Mountains. He he grew up in El Paso, Texas. He taught us what we were talking about because I was tuned. I had tuned in a station in uh, Buffalo, WKBW, and oh, yeah. he said, "Well, that's pretty far away." But when well, well, I was in Texas, I said, oh, "Wait a minute." And I tuned in WLS Chicago. I tuned in WOR New York. I started tuning in on my AM. I had an AM radio in, in my car. And he was just like, oh, that ha I said, yeah, it happens everywhere. It's a little, sometimes on the big, out in the, out in the wilderness there, out in the prairies, maybe you have a little better. You can hear. I'll go you one better. In the old days when we used to That's have antennas on the roof. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there were some things that would happen every now and then, phenomena. And one night I'm sitting there flipping around my TV set, and suddenly I'm picking up a station 2,000 miles away. Because there, oh, there, there was a skip that took skip. place for the TV set. That's station. FM. That's surprising. That's skip. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, TV, I, I, I may be wrong. Yeah, that, uh, TV no. is a VHF. It was right on the FM band. Well, here's, do you want to know where the FM band was? Do you, you remember channels, it was between channels six, six and seven? Six and seven, right. right. Yeah. Right. All your FM stations were between channel six and seven. Yep. And the, reason, and the reason you didn't have, an, you had channel two, but you never had channel one. No. And, and the reason you didn't have a channel one, I'm trying to remember what the reason was. I think it was being saved for something. Government. Government, Government. Or something, yeah. Yeah. All I used around. to work at a, my first radio station was in Titusville, Florida, right on the, the Space Coast. Yeah, uh, near Cape Canaveral, yeah. and it was a ten thousand watt AM, five thousand watt. Uh, I'm sorry, ten thousand watt daytime, five thousand watt nighttime station, and we used to get DXing cards from all over the world. People who would listen yeah. to our radio station, and they would Ow. what they would do is they would they would type up these cards and send them to you, and they would say at 
7.30 at night on Sunday, we heard these words or we heard this song just to prove it. And we go back and... And, and then the uh, station would send them a card yeah, confirming we, that they had DX's station. Yeah. QSL cards. QSLs. Yeah. 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 QSLs. Yeah. Yeah. what they were called. Um, I used to do that with the shortwave radio. And yeah. it, it used to be fun. Listen to the shortwave radio. Oh, fuck shortwave. To be able to get an AM radio station in San Francisco that was coming from <laughs> Chicago, that was something. Shortwave always had the ability to go long distances. But uh, not all the time, though, Alex. Cause they can, they, 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 no, it's not the power. It's because of the sunspots. Right. You had, you had to go by, you know, whatever the sunspots were. If they're going to be a shitty day, it's going to be a shitty day. Uh, talking about TV, we used to be in Sac uh, down here in Sacramento. We used to have the big antennas, and we used to pick up Channel Two, yeah. Channel Four. What I never out. could figure out, though, is if they were going to save what is known as Channel One for, say, government, right? Then why start with Channel Two? Why didn't you just go Channel One through Twelve? That's a good question. You know, why did they decide that they were going to everybody? Nobody and nobody ever questioned you. Well, I'm watching Channel Two. Where's Channel One? Anybody got yeah. Channel One? You know, there mm -hmm. is no Channel yeah. One. No. Well, there is I, now in New York, but on cable. I remember doing the radio, the looking for the other stations. But what we were, what we did in Virginia was, we only got the W's or the other. Well, side. everything. Every okay, I'll give you a trivia question. So everything, like everything east of the Mississippi is W. Everything west of the Mississippi is K. By the way, everything north is C. And what is it in Mexico? It's uh, uh, X, X, X. 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 Okay. X. So anyway, anyway, here's the deal. Here's the trivia question. There are only two, sta one station uh, east of the Mississippi that starts with a K, and one west of the Mississippi that starts with W. And what are they? Yes, mm. Jeff. K Pittsburgh, one of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah KDKA. KDKA, which was technically the first radio station in America. Right. If you don't believe that WKCBS in San Francisco, which was earlier KQW and had some other call sign, claims to have been the first station ever to go on the air in the United States. The mm -hmm. other one, and it's because of the name of the city, they decided they would allow them to have the W. W-A-C-O? Waco. Correct. Ah, Bingo. That was just a guess, but I figured, yeah. you know. Yeah. What what I, what I, I, that the W in them? I would think it would be New York for some reason. I don't know why. You know, for the radio was, station. Well, the only reason KDKA so, kept kept the K is because that was their original call sign. They were considered the first station in the United States, and so they didn't want to like have to change it to something else and ruin the fact that it had a certain history to it. You know. Mm -hmm. And that's why they kept it. And that's why you'll never see them change their call letters. Why a lot of radio stations t change call letters like they change girlfriends, uh, you know, uh, they never change uh, the call letters of, of uh, a station like KDKA. You know, so. We always, we always so, listen to W-I-N-O. Why why no? Wonderful <laughs> Wino. Yes. Wonderful Wino. Wonderful Wino. Well, close why to no that was I our old station why I worked for, WPLJ, that was named after a song. Yeah. Why, why Port and Lemon right. Juice. W P right. boom boom L J, my, taste my <laughs> fine to me whatever that, that whatever, something like that. Hey, I just uh, did it. I did a, uh, a search on uh, Channel One. It yeah, was it reassigned. Uh, it was uh, it was reassigned to fixed and mobile services in order to end their former. They, they were sharing that space, and rather than renumber the TV channel table, it was decided to merely remove Channel One from the table. That's why they they never bother to renumber them. Well, yeah, I, they're going to use it for uh, public safety. Nobody ever went around yeah. saying, "Hey, where's Channel One?" It just never never did that. It was hey, around for a long time, though. Yeah, yeah. it's just like a uh, thirteen floor elevator, right? Yeah. L hey, listen, there's yeah. there's the theme. Uh, thank you all for joining me this evening. Thanks to Mike. Thanks to Jeff. Thanks to John. Thanks to Renee. Thanks Gosh. to Rob. Thanks to Kevin. Thanks to Tim. And of course, thanks to Brian. What a great bunch. Great night. Almost a full house. Not quite one short of a full house. But uh, everybody, just wave goodbye to everybody. Okay? Bye. Okay, there they go, folks. And uh, they're disappearing like uh, 
like they're all hanging up on me. Well, I'll hang up on them. Here we go. Wait a minute. Let me just get rid of them. There we go. Yeah, that was a good night tonight. Just we didn't even, you know, we didn't really mention Trump once. I don't think tonight. Uh, I uh, why? There's nothing to talk about with Trump. Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. Listen, the uh, intersection is next with Jack and Amy, and then at one o'clock. I don't know. We haven't been getting a new show from. Uh, connections for quite a while now since the hurricane so i hope they're all okay and we get another show tonight from them but if we do you'll hear it at uh, at one o'clock this morning in the meantime i'm alex bennett and as always if you see her well we'll be here same time same station in life and if you see her tell her i love her i have to do the ending correctly you know what i'm saying